Previous order of the House, the gentleman from California, Mr. Lantos, is recognized for 60 minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, I would like to address myself to an issue which has gotten lost in our rejoicing over the coming of democracy and pluralism to Central and Eastern Europe. 1989 stands as a unique year in history. 1989 represented the coming to an end of communist dictatorships in many of the countries of Central and Eastern Europe. While some of the constituent republics of Yugoslavia have moved towards political democracy and pluralism, as Croatia and Slovenia, in other parts of Yugoslavia, the repressive communist dictatorship of Serbia has reduced whatever autonomy these areas of Yugoslavia had, incarcerated large numbers of people, took away any semblance of political freedom, destroyed whatever free press there was, took over radio and television. Serbian police seized the Writers' Association in the Albanian province of Kosovo and arrested the key leaders of the ethnic Albanian community committed to democracy. As you know, Ms. Speaker, a couple of months ago, I went on a human rights fact-finding mission to the Yugoslav province of Kosovo. I cannot begin to tell you, Mr. Speaker, the warmth with which I and my small party was received. And it was warmth and friendship not just directed at us, but directed at the United States of America. There are few places on the face of this planet where the United States and democracy are held in such high regard as in the province of Kosovo, the Albanian ethnic province of Yugoslavia. Yet, the communist leadership of Serbia going against the trend in the entire region has exercised a degree of suppression and brutality that we have not seen since the days of Stalinism in this entire region. It is little wonder, Mr. Speaker, that the European Parliament condemned in powerful terms the repression of the ethnic Albanian people in Yugoslavia. Mr. Speaker, the freely elected president of the Republic of Croatia, Mr. Franjo Tudjman, in an eloquent piece in the New York Times, outlined the problem we face in Yugoslavia as this country, which for many years was in the forefront of Central and Eastern European liberalization, has slipped back into the last place as the Serbian communist authorities are trying to maintain their centralized Stalinist control over a complex, diverse people. And it is the suppressed people of the Kosovo province over 90% ethnic Albanians, that the communist authorities in Belgrade are determined to keep under their yoke at the very time that in Warsaw and Prague and Budapest, the winds of freedom are blowing. It is incumbent upon us, Mr. Speaker, to speak out for human rights for the ethnic Albanian people of Yugoslavia. We must not 
allow them to continue to be treated as second-class citizens. Apartheid is alive and well in Yugoslavia and the suppressed people of that multi-ethnic state are the ethnic Albanians, deprived of elementary human rights. The Serbian communist regime is not satisfied to take away the human rights of its Albanian ethnic citizens. It has had the arrogance of exclude from entering Yugoslavia a former distinguished member of this house for a period of five years. I call upon Secretary of State Baker to express in the strongest possible terms the rejection by the United States of this unacceptable and arbitrary action. This is a bipartisan effort on the part of many of us, Mr. Speaker, in both the House and the Senate. 